Hello everyone, I am the caretaker, and welcome to BC's Video Vault. This was a segment that originally appeared on the Graveyard Show podcast in 2010, and it was a movie review segment where Brian Collins, from Horror Movie A Day, would review movies once a month. Now, there were six of these segments in total before the Graveyard Show podcast ended in mid-2010. This fourth segment comes to us from Graveyard Show podcast number 65 from April 22nd, 2010. And in it, Brian reviews the films The Eclipse, Killer Movie, and Butterfly Effect 3 Revelations. Enough from me. Let's hear from Brian as we enter BC's Video Vault. Hey folks, BC from HorrorMovieAday.com here with another edition of the Video Vault here on the Graveyard Show. Uh, I'm going to make a couple of recommendations and one warning uh, about some films that I watched last month for my daily dose of horror. First up is the new film The Eclipse, which was shown briefly in theaters here in the States prior to its DVD and on-demand release. Um, it's more of a sad character study punctuated with some J-horror style ghost scares, but let me tell you, these scares are good. I even jumped a couple times, uh, which is pretty rare. Uh, the real plot of the movie is kind of sad story. Um, Siren Hines plays a widow who meets this horror novelist at a literary festival. Um, and, you know, he's just trying to move on with his life and, you know, he's trying to get over his wife and is he, you know, right to make a new relationship, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so the ghosts he sees are essentially manifestations of the guilt he feels. Um, and the movie is more or less about him, you know, trying to get past all that. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely more of an adult, uh, dramatic horror movie, uh, due to the romance and, you know, the dramatic angle, and, but it's very well acted, uh, nicely shot, and largely original film, um, and, you know, I'd love to see more movies that use horror to tell, like, a character-based story in the future. Next up is the surprisingly not-cheesy slasher film Killer Movie, which was released on DVD about a year or so ago. Um, now, when I heard the plot, a killer stalks the crew of a reality show, uh, I thought it'd be really bad, you know, a lot of meta humor and, ooh, look at us being clever, you know, that type of stuff, like Splatter Movie or, you know, the third screen film. Um, but it's actually pretty joke-free. The reality show concept is more or less just an excuse for the crew to be in a small town. Um, it's hardly a major plot point at all, really. And, you know, without spoiling anything, there are a lot of legitimate suspects as to who the killer is, which I really like, and a lot of misdirection that kind of distracts you away from certain telltale signs that would give it away, uh, but without cheating the audience, which is cool. Uh, the cast is good, girls are hot, you got Leighton Meester, Kaylee Coco, Tori DeVito, all in one movie. And yeah, no, no problem with it. Um, you know, the kills are refreshingly, you know, they're not great, they're not like, especially memorable, but there's kind of like an old school feel to them where they're, you know, back to the days where they were mostly simple stabbings and that type of stuff, but there are a couple of cool ones. Definitely, either way, I hope to see another horror flick from Jeff Fisher in the future. And finally, I'm sure you already know this, but just in case someone dupes you into seeing it like I was, uh, I want you to avoid Butterfly Effect 3 Revelations, which was uh, released with the After Dark Festival, uh, the third one that came out in early 09. Um, now, to give credit where credit is due, the three or four kill scenes in the movie are delightfully gonzo, uh, with enough splatter to make Sam Raimi blush. But the other 85 minutes of the movie, needlessly convoluted, riddled plot holes, and largely incongruous to the rules established in the first film, our hero this time can actually travel through time instead of just rewriting history, though it presents the same sort of outcome. You know, he changes something and all, everything from that point gets, uh, you know, it's like an alternate future as a result. Um, but the changes never seem to have anything to do with what he did in the past. Like, at one point he goes back and he ends up, like, in a couple's closet watching them have sex. Because uh, so he can also choose his location. Um, but somehow this makes him a deadbeat in the future. He's, like, bumming off his roommate, not chipping in for rent. How does that work? Like, there's no correlation between what he changes and what actually happens. Um, it seems like they just had a different script and tried to meld it with the butterfly effect mythos a few days before filming started. Uh, but whatever the case, it just simply doesn't work at all. And I know a lot of people didn't like the original, uh, mainly because of Ashton Kutcher, but I actually thought it was a really solid thriller, uh, especially in that director cut form. And, you know, the whole, there were a couple of holes in the logic, but they were more like nitpicky, like, type things than glaringly obvious like they are here. Uh, I never saw two, so I don't know how that one is, but I hear it's pretty bad. Uh, though I guess when it comes to butterfly effect movies, I shouldn't listen to anyone but myself. 
And you should only listen to me. Yeah. Um, and one final quick recommendation, the 1977 Japanese film Hausu, aka House, H-A-U-S-U. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it's about. I wouldn't even recommend watching the trailer. Uh, best to go in completely blind, I think. I'm not sure if it's readily available in the U.S., but with import DVDs and such, I'm sure you'll find a way to see it. Though, the preferable way would be in a theater filled with equally bewildered folks. Um, it's been playing a lot of independent theaters this year, so check the schedules for your local indie house before settling for the DVD. And that wraps us up for another month. Be sure to check out HorrorMovieDay.com for daily reviews and information on Horror Movie Day screenings for all you Los Angeles listeners. Uh, back to you, Caretaker. Thank you, Brian. As always, great hearing your reviews. And you can purchase Brian's book on Horror Movie A Day, appropriately titled Horror Movie A Day The Book, wherever books are sold. And you can also catch him on the Shudder series Behind the Monsters. Quick mention uh, about Killer Movie. There's actually a director's cut available that was released in 2021. So you can find that online right now. I would like to invite you to join me on the Graveyard Show podcast where I interview people from the world of horror. It is available right here on YouTube, as well as everywhere podcasts exist. And you can also enter my Catacombs of Horror, which is a video production exclusive to YouTube, where I discuss different topics from the world of horror. Thank you for joining us, and as always, we look forward to seeing your comments below. I'll see you again right here inside BC's Video Vault.